gimbals. These things are as ubiquitous as ATM machines, meaning that they're pretty much everywhere. And it seems like these days, everybody has one. But the default motion mode on virtually all gimbals is something called pan following. And it's the one mode that I think it's safe to say most people are very comfortable with. But did you know that most gimbals also have something called locking mode? And the question is, in what situations would you want to use that locking mode? Well, I'm sure there are many, but in this particular video, I'm gonna give you two. Let's roll that intro. Hi, I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography, and I'm based here in beautiful, sunny, mosquito-riddled, and really freaking humid Southwest Florida. It's August, and I'm filming this video indoors today in the cool confines of my air-conditioned studio. Whew. Anyway, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because down here in Southwest Florida, the more weight you have to carry around, the sweatier you're going to get. So the weight of my camera equipment it really matters. It's one of the reasons why I like to work as lightweight as possible when I'm making my real estate videos or real estate property videos. And one of my favorite combos is the A7R Mark III and a wide angle lens. Now I prefer native wide angle lenses and I just wrapped up my review of the Zeiss Batis 18mm f2.8 lens, which by the way is amazing. Apart from its really high price tag, it's really lightweight, really easy to carry around all day, especially in the heat. Now I've been on a quest to find the perfect combo of camera, lens, and gimbal for my walkthrough videos. And right now, I'm testing out the Samyang Rokinon Bauer 14mm f2.8 wide angle lens. It's not as light as the Batis, but it's also considerably wider than half the price. So I can deal with a few more sweat beads to save that kind of money. Anyway, what's the point of this video? When using a three axis gimbal like the one I have here, and this is the Zhiyun Crane 2, not the lightest gimbal, but it's one of my favorite because it's the smoothest and most stable and it can handle up to seven pounds of payload. Now again, what sort of situation would you wanna switch your gimbal from pan following mode into locking mode? What does locking mode do? Let me explain pan following first. So in pan following, I move the gimbal around like this and it just kind of follows and just smoothly turns and rotates pretty neatly and evenly. But when I switch to locking mode by pressing the mode button, and I'm gonna aim it at the camera here, as soon as I press the locking mode, what happens is the camera is gonna remain in place. So the gimbal is gonna hold the camera in place. So I can walk in circles around this thing like so, and the camera stays in place. I can go left, I can go right, but the camera maintains its front orientation. So what are those two situations that I promise are the ones that I use locking mode the most frequently? Well. The best example that I can give you is a long, straight hallway or corridor. And it just so happens a few weeks ago, my family and I took a cruise to the Caribbean on one of the largest cruise ships in the world, Royal Caribbean's Allure of the Seas. This thing is longer than three football fields, American football. And that has a track that goes all the way around and up and down the size, the full length of the ship as well. Now to me, this was a perfect opportunity to show off locking mode. Now keep in mind, you gotta keep in mind, the boat was still moving, so there will inevitably be some sway from just side to side. But all in, I think you can see how steady locking mode can be if you wanna maintain a straight axis or straight orientation down a long corridor. So, check it out. The other good situation for utilizing locking mode is jib shots. Previously, to pull off a steady jib shot, you would need a jib or a big heavy crane, but they're generally big, cumbersome, and take a bit to set up and balance. Well, with locking mode in my Xeon Crane 2, I can attach a monopod to the base here, and voila, just like that, instant jib shots. So go ahead and check out some examples utilizing a monopod and the Xeon Crane 2 as a jib with locking mode.
That's pretty cool, right? Well, there you have it. Two great examples of when you might want to utilize locking mode with your Xeon Crane 2. I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography, and I'm based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. The links to purchase the Xeon Crane 2 are down below in the description. And until the next time, happy filming.